Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where it is time for us to spend the science we spent gathering last episode. If you weren't there, there'll be something to click around here probably, but we're just going to go pow and pow, grabbing our fuel lines and um, photovoltaics so that we can select ourselves a brand new mission. Now what mission are we going to go for? Well, of course we're going for exploring the moon. There is one fly in this particular ointment though. Our monetary values here mean that we cannot quite upgrade this vehicle assembly building, which, you know, is no biggie. Though a 30 point moon mission, uh, a 30 part moon mission, might be something to behold. So let's go in there and get going, shall we? For a bit of a change, I thought we'd talk through the building process for this. So we start with the Janus spaceship. If you don't know what that is, again, last episode. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is start dealing with all the redundancies. Like we take the monoprop away, we only need one goo canister, so we'll stick that on the side. And as I found out recently, it is very well balanced with that uh, radial parachute there. Uh, put a slightly larger fuel tank on because we're going to the moon, not just to orbit, so we're going to need more fuel tank. And after having a little bit of a look around, I spent all this time trying to figure out where to put this battery pack. I don't know why I spent so much time worrying about that, but there we go. Uh, I started off by trying to hide it under the capsule. I didn't really like that either, so we just stuck it on the side and was like, well, I want to be able to see the lights because, hey, they're the only lights on here. And of course, the photo photovoltaics are what everything was about, so there we go. That that that's put on there and going fine right so now we need to try and think about like some sort of lifting technology and there are many ways that i could have done this but i decided to strap like big things on the side because 30 part count limit uh after spending quite a long time trying to think of the name i went for the uh, working title name uh just so we could save this vessel and try and figure out an actual name for it later um so i was saying that i need big parts to save on the uh, the part count so i went for these two meter tanks and the skipper engine because like i say we need to get this thing off to the moon not just into orbit so we're going to need a, an awful lot of fuel here and this really was the big challenge of this build was trying to fit in enough fuel in while still having enough ways of getting rid of the old tanks to get us to the moon safely enough with enough fuel to come back uh, I'd like to think I did all right with this, especially having the, the, the cluster around the central ship like this. I, got, I think it was kind of with the part limit that we've got, the most efficient way of doing what I've done. And there we go. This is pretty much the vessel that we're going for. So what I'm going to do is spend forever trying to think of a name. Next up was crew selection. So Jebediah obviously going with us because we need his SAS abilities damn you jab uh, and we're going to take bob with us because we like to have a scientific advisor on this so we could get the extra points for our science and like a badly thrown javelin from an untrained paraplegic we are off barely um and that might have something to do with the fact that i turned down the thrust limiters on the outside solid boosters down to 50 percent my theory being that because these things are so large and the vessel that we're actually trying to move is quite small, if we have a small sustained push all the way through the atmosphere, that should help us overcome the air resistance as opposed to having all the acceleration right down at the bottom and then having to deal with the uh, uh, air resistance pulling us back with no thrust behind us at the top end of the atmosphere. I don't know whether that theory is correct or not, but you know what? There will be a video coming to find out whether that is really what is going on here or not. But anyway, here we go. Two Kerbals are off and we have named this ship the Diana. Not after the Princess of Wales, but in fact after the Roman Goddess of the Moon. Once again, very, very late on turning myself over to the horizontal, but uh, this is something that I've come to uh, rely on nowadays. I, I don't know why it is. Um, I, I, in my brain, there is all sorts of things going on about how it saves air resistance and rah 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 but the, the, the really the thing that it really means is that i end up with an apoapsis of 100 kilometers before i've even broken the top of the atmosphere which is a little bit i'm going to say inefficient in fact we might even get an inefficiency counter going on for this mission because there were quite a few of them this time all right so we're going for a circularization burn here uh, again inefficiency number two we did not wait until the actual apoapsis here so we ended up pushing our apoapsis up a little bit further as opposed to getting our periaps up a little bit annoying a little bit vexing but definitely something that is well within our um, capabilities of dealing with so after this perfectly circular orbit that i set up and you just take my word on it that was 
perfectly circular. Uh, we're going to do the old school trick of what time warping our way around the planet until we see the moon rising over the uh, very horizon there that we're looking at. Uh, uh, this took a little bit longer than I was expecting, to be honest. I, I thought the moon was like just there. Turns out it took uh, a little way into the dark side of the planet to find said point that we are looking for. And already at this point in the mission, I'm starting to feel a little bit jittery about how much fuel we've got in our tanks, but the moon is there. It's time to push ourselves up into an orbit that will intercept its sphere of influence. Um, I was aiming for 10 and a half, or what is that, 1,000 kilometers, 10 and a half thousand kilometers. I ended up pushing it just over 11. Again, a little bit of an inefficiency there, but you know, again, well within our uh, capabilities of dealing with. And we spent some time in the map view just making sure that my orbit and the moon's orbit are nicely synced up to meet there and we get fairly fairly uh, a fair distance away before the soi changes so that, that's quite nice that that fills me with joy but the fact that my uh, trajectory is under the moon's surface not so great and then uh, the first correctional burn that i make is in the wrong direction so yet more inefficiencies going on all around make a radial burn to try and push the uh, the periaps just up out of the out of the, the surface of the moon and then we try and use the alarm clock to uh, get my periaps uh, alarm working unfortunately that that doesn't work I don't know whether that is it integrating with the career system because it says I can't use maneuver node so I, I, I can't do it or whether it's just a problem with uh, my version of the alarm clock that I've got right now I, I I'm really not sure but anyway, we are falling down towards our periaps, and I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm watching my vertical speed indicator next to my altimeter up the top there, and looking for the point where the needle starts coming towards the zero mark, because we don't want to, once again, start pushing our periaps down when what we actually want to do is close the orbit and bring our apparaps down. So I make a quick check to see how much fuel I have in my twin tanks on the side, and it seems that I can make this burn all the way down to the uh, surface of the moon, which is obviously where we are trying to get this vessel, because, hey, you don't explore the moon without touching foot on it. And it's around about here that I start to notice that, oh, I haven't got quite as much thrust as I thought I was going to have, and wouldn't you know... I'm completely out of fuel on my outside tanks. Now this is a bit of a problem because uh, during the mission planning phase I really was expecting to have uh, this central, um, central pod full of fuel when I was going to take off again. So uh, the mission's a little bit in jeopardy now, but you know, these boys have come all this way from Kerbin, you know, it has taken a day and 20 minutes. That's a long time to be waiting around in this tiny capsule. So they're, they're going for the surface. Uh, so we brought our periaps down to just below the, the surface of the moon again, and we're just going to try and pick a nice landing spot somewhere, use the retrograde pointing capabilities of the SAS, possibly one of the best, um, best new features in the, 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 the most recent addition to the game. It makes landing an absolute doddle. It, it used to be that you'd have to be able to like watch stuff and try, try and keep it all balanced. And uh, Yeah, it, it really went over the top. But anyway, so you see the ridge in between these two craters. This is definitely where I'm heading for at this present moment in time. The problem is, if I start burning now, I completely overshoot. And th this, this really... Uh, I wasn't quite ready for that. Um, and it even looks like we're going to land on the slope of that crater in front of us. So I, I give a little nose up just to make sure we push over that lip. And then start slowing it down again. So we land on this nice flat area just beyond the crater. Because, hey, we all know that landing on a crater wall is a lot of issues. And now it's just simply a case of um, nullifying all our forward velocity. Which is really, really simple to do nowadays. And just gently coast our way down onto uh, our landing legs here and boom not quite boom <laughs> uh, nearly half a fuel tank there left that's a little bit vexing a little bit worrying but we have much more important and historic things to deal with at this present moment in time not least of which first kerbal on the moon to this one i chose bob kerman because stuff you jeb you're always there and i dislike it uh so the eva mission uh, eva report is a definite must that's some serious science in the bank and time to place down a flag looking around for a decent place to take a screenshot from that's not great but we're going to rename the flag bob kerman was here 
Bob Kerman made it, Jeb was still in the capsule. Bad luck, Jeb. And I don't know if you can see that right on the very horizon over there, but there seems to be an anomaly that I'm not talking about the planet. If you look just to the very left of the planet, you can see this, this sort of grey thing that appears to be floating, and Bob, being the scientist that he is, decides that he needs to go and have a look. And Oh, what a very unusual thing this is as well. Um, it appears to be some sort of sculpture depicting the end of a civilization at some point. Uh, there is a, a, a big rock floating above the surface of a, of a body, not causing any, any destruction. Very strange very confusing uh, well this obviously means that Bob needs to go and investigate and I ideally get a screenshot of him next to this floating rock with Kerbin in the background this is actually very difficult to do though because well if you move around he faces the way the camera's looking and I want to point the camera at Kerbin whilst having Bob facing the other direction and I give up and I go for a collision but of course there is no collision mesh on these rocks which is all a bit weird so anyway it's time for Bob to go back and let Jeb out of the can of course before such serious matters as serious moon exploration Bob needs to do a bit of a backflip and get the uh, the gymnastics out of the way first well you know, that is the way on the moon. We, we all play around with the Kerbal Dynamics and, and see what happens. Uh, I try jumping a little bit further away and eventually manage to just jump straight into the hatch, which is quite good. Uh, time to do our sciences because that is actually what we're here for, I suppose. I mean, the contract is kind of important as well, but wow, there is no science like your first moon science for getting yourself through that um, that tech tree. And now it's time to get Jeb out. And now Jeb, not... Ooh. <laughs> aside from trying to knock the spacecraft over, is not quite the scientific mind that Bob is and decides that he just wants to go and have a look over some of the like panoramic vistas that we find around here. And, and will you just look at that? Literally just over the side of the crater that we flew over on the way here, we have a view such as this. And ah, oh, it is... Is actually a little bit breathtaking. We're gonna we're gonna wander Jeb up to the very edge of this sort of uh, triangular feature here, and just just look over at that form. That's amazing. Uh, and also, I think it's time to grab ourselves a quick postcard. So a, a small bit of camera rework. Boom! Nice. And the only thing left to do now is make our way back to the shuttle. But first. Oh, uh, let's do some weirdness with the camera. It turns out if you uh, have control of the Kerbal and stick it into orbital mode, or orbital camera mode, he does a little weird face plant on the side of the of the hill you're stood on. But yeah, anyway, I, I just wanted to show you guys that because that was quite weird. So Jebediah has made his way back to the capsule and after a little bit of alignment, we get ourselves very nicely into the shuttle. Uh, now, I'm not even going to try and work through any of the, the maths to find out what's going to go on here. We're just going to launch, point towards Kerbin, and I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. If you want to find out whether I make it back, I will see you next time, probably on Wednesday, if not Thursday. Bye!